Hi, I'm Terry Strawman at Thronki Ramatraka with crooked glasses. I said that. Now I don't have to keep trying to make them look like they're not crooked. Okay. They're broken. One armed. I'm not going to go get a prosthetic arm for my glasses. They were cheap anyway. I just have to get new glasses. But I'm lazy. All right. Thank you for selecting this video on consciousness hijacking and driving a vehicle. <laughs> okay, so before I continue, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, do it. I don't know why you're waiting around. I don't know. Beats me. Click on the notification bell feature. Activate that while you're subscribing. Two birds, one stone kind of thing. All right. Share the joy of the channel with others. Comment courteously below. Give the video a thumb up. Just do it, you know. I don't care if you, whether you like it when you do that. Just, just give it one. I mean, maybe other people are going to like the video, right? But they're not going to look at it if they don't see a couple of thumbs up. So, come on, man. What's wrong with you? Okay, now that I've said that stuff, let's go. I don't know what I'm going to say about this. But my wife said, I want to hear about consciousness hijacking. And at driving. Because I asked her, what, what, what video should I make now? Just a little while ago. Right there she is. And she said, consciousness hijacking. Hi. Hi. See? Did you did you ask for this video? Yes, this I This is my did. special request. Yes, I did ask for it. There you go. See? Hey, I'm not a liar. You think I was kidding around? What's wrong with you? No, this is this is uh, the honest stuff here, man. Okay, just chock full of wisdom, straight from God. <laughs> consciousness hijacking and driving. Do you know what consciousness hijacking is? Well, if you don't, then you haven't looked at my channel much, have you? I mean, at least look at the channel trailer. It's, it's mentioned right there. Consciousness hijacking. You know, that, that means, like, your awareness of affairs in your life, the external world, and, and, and the inter your internal world, gets cluttered, hijacked, derailed by stuff that you didn't want there, or that you have really let in by mistake or, you know, bad choice, destructive stuff, stuff that keeps you, you know, from being in control of your own awareness of affairs. It happens a lot more, guys, than you like to think about it, than you want to admit or that you are aware of. Why might you not be aware of it? Because your consciousness is hijacked. <laughs> okay. Consciousness hijacking. And how this affects driving. Or how driving a car, truck, limousine, jitney, Uber, anything. Out there on the road with other People driving the same kinds of contraptions might affect consciousness hijacking. Okay. Now you know what driving is. So now we know what we're talking about. A causal relationship among consciousness hijacking and driving. Now we know what we're talking about, right? So now what are we going to say about it? Well, I don't know. Let me see. I have to make this up, but it's real. It's the truth. I have to look in my mouth because I think that I have words right in the tip of my tongue. I got to figure out what I'm going to say. Oh, yeah. All right. Now I know something to say. <clears throat> Driving. Well, let's just take this approach, right? Let's take this approach. There are 
out there in the streets, no matter what part of the road you're in, there are either written or verbally understood or intuitive. One way or the other, there are some rules about it. All right, so let's say you live in a contemporary, civilized society. Thank you, honey, for the coffee. You're welcome. It's just coffee. So there are some rules. Now, what are they there for? I, well, people's safety, I guess, mostly. I don't know. Maybe some of it's just to exercise control over people. And there's nothing else to it. I don't know. There might be. I mean, it's highly possible. Very possible. So there probably are things like that. Yeah. But in large, it's for safety. You know, a way to keep cars, automobiles, horse-drawn buggies, mules that you're riding, in a, working in an orderly fashion so they don't run into each other. So that everybody can get to where they're going, you know, kind of like, safely. But it's a common set of rules. Everybody has the same ones. So that's an important element here. That's kind of like the difference between, you know, there are people who have graduated high school but no college. Then there are people who have graduated high school and they have a college degree. What's what's the purpose of that general those general education requirements, for example, in college? You know, the first two years, mostly courses you have to take just to meet requirements. You have to have a science. You have to have a hard science. You have to have a social science. You have to maybe take speech communication. You have to take English Composition 101. You have to take college algebra. You have to have a foreign language. What are those things for? They are to give people a common background of knowledge. For in society, when people work together, you can usually tell by talking to somebody whether they have a college degree. No matter what the degree is in, no matter what their major was those last two years, especially the senior year, what they've emphasized, what they have an education in, but along with that, having an education in something, they have some general education that pretty much corresponds with other people's general education. Okay? So maybe your hard science isn't the same as what somebody else took as a hard science to meet the requirement, but it's a hard science. Okay? And there are certain terminologies, certain methods of thinking, and so forth, that are common to them. That's why they're grouped together as the hard science. One reason, one way to describe why they're grouped, how they group together it's a hard science. So you took chemistry, somebody else took physics. Okay, but you both know what it's like to work in a science lab. All right. There's common knowledge. So you know what it's like when somebody says, well, you, you know, I, uh, I'm forming a hypothesis. And, uh, you know, it's, it's intersubjective. You know, if we test it out to move on to maybe developing a theory about this thing here we're talking about today at work, son. Or whatever, buddy, buddy boy. Uh, so, you've been to college. I've been to college. So here, let me let's, let me just put it like this. When we test this out here, well, you're going to see that it's intersubjectively confirmable. All right, and it's falsifiable. You know, if it's false, we'll know it's false. All right. So, and and you know what they're talking about. Because you have common background of knowledge about things. All right, you're on this. You can be on the same page without even really trying to be. Whereas the person who doesn't has not participated or achieved that that level of common knowledge. In other words, they're not part of the common. <laughs> they're not going to know what you're talking about. They may have never heard of the Peloponnesian War, but you heard of it. 
You may know nothing about it, but you heard of it. So if somebody says Peloponnesian War, you don't think they're trying to say pepperoni pizza. <laughs> you know, they're talking about the Peloponnesian War. It took place sometime, you know, before the year 1000 AD or BC, well, uh, uh, Common Era, CE. It took place sometime before that. It was one of those Mediterranean type of things. You know that about it, right? And I didn't say Polynesian. I didn't say Presbyterian either. I said Peloponnesian, right? If you've been to college, you may have vague memory of that. You see, you heard of it, all right? Driving. <clears throat> the common rules, the laws of your country, your state, whatever, concerning driving. Everybody has this common set of rules to follow. So the more people follow them, the more organized is the driving. You know, you, if you get somebody making up their own rules over here, and you're following the given rules that most other people are in general closely approximating in their execution of, of driving patterns and habits, here comes this other guy with a totally different set of rules. He made it all up. It's what he wants to do today. Well, that kind of gets things in a jam. You know, he cuts you off, doesn't use his turn signal, doesn't look. See, this riles you up. Now, what's that have to do with your personal involvement? Well, it gets you upset, for one, and that gets in the way of your... And you're getting consciousness hijacked right there. There's a mild form of it. And you start thinking, well, I should just drive the way I want to. All these other yahoos are just racing all over the damn place. I'm having to slow way down to avoid them. I just want to go to work. So you go ahead and you chomp on the gas. All right, you join the flow of traffic. The speed limit is 55, but everybody's doing 65, and it's between the hours of 6 and 8.30 in the morning. So you're not going to get pulled over. Everybody's going fast. Everybody has to get to work. The cops are letting it happen. Right then. Okay, you're with the flow of traffic. All right, that's kind of like a common knowledge thing that you you can do early in the morning when everybody's going to work, rushing off to work. Okay. So you do that. All right. I'm not talking about that. <clears throat> okay. But you have this common understanding with other drivers. You stick with it, and almost everybody else is sticking with it. You have less chance of getting consciousness hijacked, emotionally hijacked, all this hijacking going on. You're getting distracted from focusing on just driving. I mean, you have, well, when I say that, I mean driving in accordance with the rules and everybody else driving in accordance with the rules. The rules are set up so that if everybody does that and they're not sleeping at the wheel, everybody's going to be okay. But stuff really gets hijacked in your mind. You know that when you get pissed off. Now, is that is getting pissed off while driving a vehicle, for God's sakes, at 60 miles an hour? Or if you're on the Autobahn, 500 miles an hour? <laughs> I mean, is that really a good idea? To get pissed off about the driving and about the other people out there? Maybe feel like getting revenge. Is that really in control of your consciousness? You might think it is, but no, that's out of control because it does not feel good. You experience this all day, every day? Oh yeah, off to work again. To work I go. I owe, I owe. So off to work I go. Early in the morning. Go out there. You get in your vehicle. Oh, man. This whole thing. This whole clunker. Let it warm up. You like my vehicle sounds, Allie? She does. She does. She said it twice. Okay, so. And you get out there on the road. Here comes some guy. You're, you're turning right out of your driveway, right? And you start to go. <laughs> Looks like all clear. And you get out there and here comes some car. 
thinks it's on the Autobahn, but it's just the back road, you know, near town, right? <laughs> Jesus! A guy trying to kill people! He's trying to kill people! He shouldn't have a license! He can't see! Already you're thinking people out there trying to kill you. Do this kind of stuff every day. You have 40 year work life, 50 year work life, 60 year work life. This has a big effect on your consciousness, man. You get hijacked by the driving experience. Just the driving experience. Getting to work. And then getting home. Rush hour. Coming home. God damn. I'm going to miss dinner. Ah, shit. What's going on out there? There's a lot of consciousness and hijacking that goes on. Wouldn't it help if everybody just obeyed the freaking laws? And try to stay awake? You know, pay attention to what they're doing? How well can you pay attention to what you are doing? Mentally attend. Focusedly. Intentionally, focusedly. Calmly and confidently, focusedly. On what you are doing at the moment, right now. If your consciousness is hijacked all over the damn place. Huh? Those, those two ideas right there that I just said. You know, how can you do this if that? The before the if and then the after the if, they sound like almost contradictory things. Pretty hard to do the one while the other's in place. You know what I'm saying? You know where I'm at? Feel me? Yeah, consciousness hijacking and driving. So look, focus on what you're doing. Learn to focus on what you're doing. Take it easy. Relax. Obey the laws. Because that's the common ground. What else are you going to do? What other, what other recourse do you have? Stick to the rules. You don't have to like them. You don't have to agree with them. Just stick to the rules because that's what's given you there. as the uh, common knowledge, the common practice for everybody. And most people do it rather closely. And somebody who doesn't, get out of their way. Don't compete with them. Don't try to get them back. And stay in control of your consciousness, okay? Stay in control of it. Understand what's going on. Understand the reasons why you're going to do this now. Follow the rules just to maintain control of your consciousness. Follow the structure that's given to follow. My God, the consequences of not doing so or allowing your consciousness to get hijacked by all of this and join into the consciousness hijacking thing by doing more of it to yourself now and to others, it does not help. How much of that really helps? How much of it gets you in the front of the line? On the highway. Really? There is no front of the line. If you don't have to drive, but you know, like 45 minutes to work or less, how much is going 10 miles an hour fast, 15, 20 miles an hour faster than everybody else? How much does that really put you ahead? It doesn't really. You know? The guy you passed halfway to work who's going to the same place you're going, you know, you might be walking in the front door and he's just pulling into the parking lot, but that's not a big difference, guys. Hell, if you're more than five minutes late, you know, if you're five minutes late, he's going to be seven minutes late. You're both over, you're both late. Big deal. How many times have you zipped past people in town, right? Only to go to get get to a red light, and the guy you just flew past pulls up right beside you in the other lane, the lane beside you. He got there too. You're not ahead anymore. But you just endangered life. 
You got your consciousness hijacked. That's why you did it. And now it's hijacked even more. Now you feel like you have to even be more fast. You want to get ahead? My God, you have to fly! Watch it, man. Be careful. This driving thing. You know what? Hey, you know what the biggest investment most people ever make in their life is? A house. You know what the second is? A car. Those are the things that cost most people the most money. Unless you're John Travolta and you have two jets sitting in your driveway, which he does. He said so. It's like, yeah, his driveway is actually a runway at his house. You know that? Well, unless you're like that, then driving a car, a vehicle, you might even do it for work all day. But this is one of the most big deals that you do in your life. Whether or not you like to think like that. I mean, it's almost right up there with walking. So it is a big deal. Has a greater effect on your consciousness than you might know. So unhijack your consciousness about that. How about that? All right. Consciousness hijacking and driving. All right, it ends. Stay tuned, man. Don't drop out. Drop in. There you go. <laughs> drop in sometimes, you know, to your own mind. Okay? It's a really good idea. So there. I hope I've satisfied the requirement. Have I, Allie? Yes. I satisfied your desire? Yes. Consciousness hijacking and driving? Yes. She said yes. At least variation there. Okay, so I hope I did it for you too. Hope you got what you expected. I hope you I hope you didn't say, oh that was just clickbait. No, no, if you say that, your consciousness is hijacked. In fact, your perception is deceived. Yeah. Thumb up! You know what I mean? This video actually gave you what you were looking for. Alright. There you go. Share the joy of the channel with others too. Say hey. There's this channel. I'll send you the link. It's Ron Q. Ramatraga. Man, it's the real. And a guy on there, man, he's really good looking. I don't know, man. You know, like, you might be a guy. He's like, look, I'm not gay. All right? But that guy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Share the joy of the channel with others. Comment courteously below. Subscribe, get notified, and remember, you heard it right here on Theron Q. Ramachraga. And remember, I'm Turk Strongman. Oh, there's a name to remember. Hi, right. I'm Turk Strongman. Be well.